Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Big Mike here. Today I'm going to cover several things and um, kind of give you guys a state of my eBay and Amazon sales. Kind of talk through some issues I've had on eBay. Um, then also kind of cover a huge sourcing haul I had yesterday. And then one more big thing that happened yesterday evening. Um, and then lastly, kind of cover where my sales are on those platforms. But before we get started, I wanted to ask you guys, throw me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and definitely leave a comment if you can. As you all know, that helps the YouTube algorithm, and it also helps my channel. I uh, appreciate the support, and I like knowing uh, what you guys think and the comments you want to, and any comments you can leave kind of help me out. So um, that said, I am also just about five subscribers short of 1,000 again. So once I hit that, um, I probably may do some sort of a little celebratory thing. I'm not sure yet. I've been thinking that through. So we'll see how that goes. Um, again, appreciate you guys for watching the videos. The, um, the first thing that I wanted to cover and kind of go over is the eBay return policy. Um, I know this changed. It's been several months ago. It kind of changed where eBay is opening up the return window a lot longer and uh, basically giving buyers remorse, uh, a lot more credit, I guess, for the buyers. Um, from from a from my standpoint, I understand giving the buyers the uh, the ability to to um, return items, but I think it, it kind of I almost feel like some of the buyers might be abusing this. Um, it's really kind of driving me nuts. I've had three sales in the last three to four weeks that were fifty to hundred dollars a piece, and all three, all three of those big items were returned. Uh, buyer's remorse, they said, just don't want it. Um, one of them was a blender kit. It was a really expensive uh, Ninja blender kit. One was a really expensive uh, drill set with all the pieces and everything. And then the third was some um, Comcast kits, digital kits. There was multiples of those. They bought three of those and they decided they wanted to return all of them. Um, so it's kind of weird. They The problem with that is they bought all those items and then they decided after what is it like 15 days they decided they want to return them so now i'm essentially going to be out of not only the funds that it cost me to pay for those items and and ship them but then once i get them back which takes you know by the time i get it back get it relisted it's going to be out of my inventory for over a month so that really kind of stinks um, i'm debating if i need to figure out a way to do a restock fee or something like that but for right now um, kind of stuck with that policy and I, I almost feel like some folks are maybe abusing it while I understand a return policy um, one of the things that kind of drives me nuts is this is eBay this is not going to your local retailer buying something getting it home and then returning it and they get the item back the next day it's a little bit different um, I would I would really like to I would like to offer just a seven day return window if you if upon receipt they have seven days to initiate a return um, and you have to get that item back. So it's still gonna be two, maybe three weeks in some of those scenarios, but it really shortens that time that the sellers are losing out on that potential sale. But anyway, um, the, the biggest frustration I've got with that is then I look at my Amazon sales. I have actually sold, um, what is it, right at, let's get a, a exact, I've sold 680 um, items on Amazon in the last 120 days. Um, most of, you know, the first 40 days was a lot slower. So a lot of that sales is within the last uh, 90 days. And I have had one returned item. Uh, they requested the return, got the, uh, initiated the return. They paid the shipping to and from. Uh, so I essentially got the item back. I didn't lose any money. It was very fast, very efficient, and uh, no no hassles at all. So in, in the last, um, what, four months, I've had one return one request that they never followed through on and uh in ebay it just in the last three or four weeks i've had three requests for 50 to 100 dollars items which is really kind of stinks but anyway tell me what you guys think about that leave me a comment in the down below what you guys think about the, that ebay return policy and how you think that affects your business okay so the next item that i want to kind of talk about is pretty cool yesterday i was uh, decided i wanted to go to a bunch of yard sales and try to source mainly books. I've been trying to source mainly books. I've got plenty of eBay inventory. I've been looking for books for my Amazon business to kind of build that up. Um, and I made it to two yard sales, like one or two books each. And then I just happened to go go through an area and there's a library. 
that was having a book sale and it was a donation book sale not a book sale of the books um, like old books that they had it was where they had put out a notice to receive books from um, local bookstores and from uh, local people and a lot of the books I was extremely surprised um, a huge number of them were brand new never even been read um, so I actually decided when I was passing that I was very excited um, pulled in I spent about three and a half hours total. I ended up having to take a lunch break, but I was so excited, man. I was, I was absolutely, I was, it was air conditioned, but I was sweating. I was scanning using Scout IQ and my little scanner going through and scanning a bunch of books. I ended up, if you guys go back and look at my, if you go check out my Facebook, Instagram, or my Twitter accounts, and if you haven't subscribed to those, subscribe to those because I posted those much more often than I do on YouTube. But uh, I posted a picture, and I'll throw the picture up here if I can, if I've got room on the screen. Um, I filled my vehicle full of about a thousand books. Um, and actually, uh, let me show you guys here. I actually spent, I don't know if you can see that, if it focuses or not, but let's see. Yeah, $1,204. Um, so um, just a huge, huge haul. And it was a mix of hardbacks and paperbacks. So um, got all those books. They're in my car. Uh, that was a massive, amazing find. Um, I probably could have bought several thousand books, but I'm using the Scout IQ app to really filter out. Um, the best book I found, uh, I think I found one book that was over 90 bucks uh, profit. But on average, a lot of the books were 10 to $12 profit. But on average, I figure my profit margins around $5. And that's being conservative. And a lot of people, a lot of resellers of books would say, oh man, that's horrible. I, I don't do anything where I can't make at least $10 or $20, whatever. Um, as a new Amazon seller, you're going to want to build up your sales and it's going to take time. So you're going to have to have books that you're going to make $2 profit on. Um, it's just part of the, part of the game, I guess, is, as building up your business. But anyway, um, so I figure my, my average profit on those books is going to be $5, which I'm extremely happy with because two things, that gets me $5,000 in profit. Okay, that's tremendous. I spent $1,200 if, once they, and if they all sell, I'll make $5,000. That's huge. And the other thing is, is um, if they all sell, my average sales price is going to range anywhere. I mean, overall, my average sales price is running nine, ten dollars somewhere in there. So let's use a conservative number there as well. That would bump my gross sales by up to nine thousand um, dollars. And as you guys, if you follow my Facebook and, and other things, I just posted yesterday. I just hit six thousand in gross sales. My sales are just taking off um, over the last sixty days. It's really kind of uh, uh, mountain going up. So. I'm really excited about that. So either way, that was awesome. Okay, so the really cool thing is, is the third thing I wanted to talk about today is yesterday afternoon, I had uh, been conversing back and forth in text messages with a guy that bought a bunch of toys from me last year. If you guys go back to my videos from last year, you'll know that a lot of my eBay sourcing was this big, uh, several halls, uh, multiple halls of toys. And, um, and they were mostly vintage toys, a lot of G.I. Joe, some He-Man, Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Soldiers of the World, all those kind of things. And a lot of sports mem memorabilia and the Walking Dead stuff too. Anyway, uh, he had reached out to me. He had bought some stuff for me last year. He reached out to me and said, hey, um, I was looking, I know we talked about a bunch of loose items. So I've sold a lot of boxed items. That stuff's really easy to take pictures of and list. But I had like eight boxes of mostly loose items. And it was a lot of G.I. Joe, um, a lot of figures, a lot of uh, little uh, guns and, and different things, parts for those characters. Um, and so what I did is I had all those in these big boxes. And I was just putting, I keep pushing them off to the side in the storage unit saying, I'll get to those later, I'll get to those later. And then I go buy a new inventory. So those things were going to sit there forever. Now, could I have made a lot of money on those? Absolutely. I would have taken, a, I would have had to take a lot of time though to clean them up, get them out, put the parts together. I would say there was several hundred um, G.I. Joe characters, wrestling characters. Um, there was some boxed items. I did uh, had one big box that was just full of boxed items. Um, but a lot of the stuff is vintage items, right at 20 to 25 years old. Um, so really good for his collection and also really good for me because I still made profit on it. Um, I ended up selling all that for $1,200. Um, which really kind of washes. I spent $1,200 on books and I sold $1,200 worth of old inventory, what I'm considering 
uh, death pile inventory. So it worked out really good for me. It was a great day. Um, it took most of my, almost all day. I was going back and forth between doing the books and then going to the storage unit to get those items. But anyway, I didn't video any of that. Uh, it's a, it's a personal transaction. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to make the guy uncomfortable. But anyway, I will show you a picture of the item. Sold that for 1200 bucks. So I think that's a huge win on the books as well as a huge win on the sales. So, so, okay. The, the last thing I wanted to talk to just, uh, just kind of briefly go over, like I said, I just hit 6,000 on my, uh, Amazon book sales. And what I wanted you guys to know is my, I'm going to do a video here shortly and just kind of do the tips and tricks. I did a, my last video was of the things of how to get started from just scratch doing, knowing nothing about e, uh, Amazon trying to get started. Um, so what the next video I'm going to do is I'm going to try and I've, I've got several little things that have bothered me. I've struggled with, or, and they're not horrible things, but just little things that I've worked through. So the next video, I'm going to kind of work through a bunch of the tips and tricks that I've kind of learned so far. Um, one of those being is, uh, something that, uh, will help me drastically with my sales. My uh, family just bought this for me. It's just a, uh, in a tech, um, scanner. I got this off of Amazon. Um, it's a USB powered. Um, it does have a battery pack in it and it's got a memory and you can do, um, you can do wireless connection and, and do that. But I just plug it into the computer and I grab a book, scan it when I'm listing them on Amazon and it throws the barcode into the, um, the initial product ad. And then it jumps straight, it goes straight to, I hit a button and then all I gotta do is I enter four fields and I get the book listed. So I can list a book probably in about 20 seconds. So that thousand books, you know, multiply that by 20, 30 seconds each. I could probably list all those books in a few hours, um, especially using a tool like this. I was using another app on my phone that was, um, would send the barcode, but it was really kludgy. I'd have to like line it up and I'd have to reset the app every time I used it. This is extremely fast, extremely accurate. Uh, I, I tested it with a couple hundred books yesterday absolutely amazing so um, this is just one of those tools that you guys uh, will want to add as you move your you know, level your business up um, the other thing is that i wanted to talk about real briefly is um, is the scout iq app i i think it's probably just a huge saver on the ability to be able to use it now i do you i do pay for the app um, i don't do the live uh, i do I, I mean i'm sorry i do the live i don't pay for the database download um, I just feel like I'm not quite to that level yet. It's a lot more expensive. And then the last uh, tool that I'm using that I really love is the reprice it uh, tool. So um, right now I'm just wrapping up my uh, demo version of that and I'm going to have to go to the next level because I'm over 500 listings constantly. Um, and which is way, I've actually got around 450 listings still on eBay, but I'm consistently keeping about 550 listings on Amazon. And I'm going to ramp that up to try and get to that twenty thousand uh, gross sales mark, so that I can start really unlocking a lot of other stuff. Hopefully, before too close to Christmas this year. So, all that said, I wanted to kind of cover all those things, let you guys know where I'm at, how things are going. Um, as as I said at the beginning of the video, please throw me a uh, comment down in the down low. Questions of what you guys want to see in the future videos, um, comments hit the thumbs up button. And as always, guys, please subscribe. I really want to hit that thousand marker and uh, keep going and growing from there. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Be blessed and I'll see you in the next video.